YouTube. Uh, for this demo, I'm purposing. I'm using a uh, one of my American recent American custom handmade guitars. Of which, well, that one, that one's not mine. But okay, there's three in this room, handmade one-offs. Uh, but I'm actually demoing uh, this, which I'm just going to shout because the mic's over there. This is a Marshall Mark II Studio. It says on it. Uh, I've literally turned it on and it nearly took my head off until I found out that there's the volume controls aren't called volume, they're called loudness and there's two of them. Um, yeah, so basically I once I turned them down, so I don't know how long. Basically I'm kind of looking after this for my pal. Uh, I had a, a Supro amp and recently I think he doesn't have enough room. I think he's got enough room for one combo amp. Or he's like he's got enough room for three combo amps and he's got four kind of thing. So one of them's kind of uh, lives in my hall most of the time. Currently it's this Mar this lovely Marshall. Um, I mean it looks absolutely amazing. It's quite it's quite amazing how it changes the whole shape of your room by having a white face stamp on it. So we've got like sort of burgundy, no, red, red dark red, Tolex. With the old style Marshall thing on it, so I'll, I'll shout out what the knobs are. It's, it's the one that's got um, the old I don't I don't know is it the JMP something they're called whatever it is. They've got like two inputs. They've always they've got four input sockets, and you always see people jumping the two of them together, um, with a patch cable. That's what this has. So the two of them are jumped together with a patch cable. So I'm kind of running through both channels at the same time. Um, I know that's a thing, but I think it's quite an accurate one. I don't even know how many watts it is. A lot. Well, it might be. I'd imagine we're probably normally fifty, so maybe half that. Maybe it's either a twenty-five or a fifty. I would think. Um, but my God, it's loud. It's times like this to realise that, that this one, the thirty watt, but it's got a switch in the back that puts it to half power. It's got a switch in the front that puts it to quarter to half power again. So it's actually seven and a half watts is what I'm using it in the house, and the volume is at less than one for house volume. You know, these are gigging amps. You don't buy a thirty watt. Well, it says studio on it. Use it for the studio, but obviously you play it damn loud. Um, so I'm not really going to be able to demo this properly because I can't turn it up. I think, I think my pal's got like a, is it a power soak it's called or something like that. So you can run the amp at a decent, at half power or you know half volume, and then you can you you it's like a load box for the speaker, so it takes away, so it actually kind of turns the speaker down. But even even at that, the speaker's not moving air the way it's meant to. You know, this that's designed. Well, now it's designed as a boutique amp, but I'd, I'd imagine it's a copy of something in the day and it would have just been a gigging amp. Nay PA, just there's your amp. I'm playing through that. That's it. And you sing through the the same mic, the same PA system that the bingo caller uses. You know what I mean? That That's the the, the 60s way. Um, so I'll turn it on. Uh, this is a... The, the settings, I'll well, shout out what the knobs are. It's got loudness 2, loudness 1, treble, middle, bass and presence. And then there is actually a, similar to this, you've got like a an on-off switch. And then the standby switch in the middle is in standby and up. It's low and then down is high. On this it's uh, cl uh, half and full. So it does have a half power section. I think basically what it does is it only uses half the the preamp tubes and I think on the back of this one it's got a thing in the back that only uses half the power amp tubes you know there's two big power amp tubes I think it just uses one hence half the power and I think it does the same with the preamp so I think that this does the preamp thing it does have external speaker sockets on the back of it so I could be running it through the 3 by 12 I'm just running it through its internal speaker because it's see what I mean? oh jeez but it's quite trebly so that, that's been the middle position of this Bit the neck, neck humbucker, French humbucker, and that's basically with one of the volume controls just registering, just enough to let something through. That was loudness two. So if I turn around loudness one. Or the, this is loudest too. Oh, there you go. I think maybe 
Lounge One or, or Channel One. It's, it's annoying that they go two one, not one two. But then that that amps barely on. That's so much better than it was a second ago. I've not. I've literally not messed about with it. I don't know whether that's how the amp was set or whether it's been sitting in the back of the car or something and it's maybe the or it's been moved about the knobs have been moved. <laughs> Sounds very powerful. But sorry, is that, is that, this is channel two, so I mean, if I put this up, does it? Is that what I said? It's kind of lacking treble, but it's the other. Loudness one. It's a twang fest. So I'd imagine what you might do is you. You've got, that's why people like the two channels together no I, did, I didn't look this up i'm just working this out from my head just now one of the pen one of the it's like you've got like a sort of woolly muffly subwoofery sound and then a super twangy treble one so you put both of them on at the same time and then you can have both rather than having one of one or t'other so I've got that. there's the, the loudness the, the trebly one set so bridge humbucker <laughs> And then it sounds amazing. It doesn't have reverb, I'm using the my Moore Shimverb pedal. There's not really anywhere I can stand so you can see it. That's it, there go there. start fidgeting with the knobs because I just put I turned it on and it was just like pure that it was just the treble channel it was just like ah it's just too much but I've been able to mix the two together yeah What's the rap pedal going to sound like then? My favourite pedal. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's amazing. Totally. I was. I think even at the start of this very video, I was saying it'll probably go back out into the hall because I just thought that it's not going to work at a volume I can use it at. I mean, okay, I'm got a unique, unique, not a unique situation, but I'm doing YouTube videos, wanting to do videos where I can still sort of talk. You know, got neighbours and stuff, can't they really go that loud? So basically having, you know, like gigging amps in the house is a stupid idea, basically. But, um, so I basically never run get distortion. I just use the clean channel on the amps and then use the pedal board. I use basically the rap pedal and the reverb so I can use the loop pedal. Um, so for me, some amps, which might be amazing for gigging, don't really work in here. I thought this was going to be one. But it's no, that's totally, I can totally use that, no problem. That, a half power in the front and basically the volume controls. Um, the amps, it's, the amps not, it's not the anything like the best way of using that amp. That should be a gigging amp. It should be playing along with a drum kit. You know, that's what it's for. It'll sound amazing and it'll make perfect sense. It sounds amazing as it is right now. And I'm totally... And that's the internal speaker as well. Um, that's not the, the 3 by 12 So, and technically it's got like a... It'd be a, maybe a much more expensive speaker or a better speaker or a better suited speaker to the amp. But um, normally three 12 inch speakers is better than one. But it's certainly with that. I mean, the, the, the speaker, the, the 12 inch inside, that's the, the orange is fine. It's great. I don't think it's as good as that, though. Cause I noticed. It's, um, but then again, maybe maybe it's just a much better amp. Um, I don't know if it's much more, would be much more used to me. Probably. No, it's not. As it fails, the. It's, it, it, one of my stupid criteria knobs on the front so looking at it yep that amp's not on knobs on that on the top is it on well if i can see it when i stand up but if i'm sitting down i can't see whether it's on so tendency to leave it lying on also a lot of dust seems to collect on the top this is me going against my, my the, the downsides of my wee laney amp is that on the top it makes perfect sense um the valves have to go somewhere. I think, I assume that's a 12 inch speaker. It's not, I, I assume it is, because it looks to be the same size as that. I think that's just the, you know, the, the it makes it slightly, slightly smaller. <laughs> like it's, it's like an inch lower. It's also, it's a significantly smaller cabinet than this. This is a chunky boy. Um, it's dead deep, whereas that's not as deep as I like, well, Probably only an, an inch less deep. And, uh, you know. These things make a difference when you're trying to fit them in your car and you're carrying them any length of distance. That's why that wee lane is so amazing because it's like, oh, that is easy. And you think, oh, that's just a wee bit bigger. No, it's not. It's, it's only that much bigger, but that much bigger and weighs twice as much. But uh, yeah, so I'm actually quite impressed with this amp. Um, I kind of don't want to fiddle about with it because it's not mine, but um, I'm one of those, what, if it sounds good, I'll just leave it. I'm kind of happy. I know I could. I know I could twiddle with it. Again, this suits perfectly into the playing an incredibly expensive amp sound or guitar sound. I was noticing this when I was playing that in a video I did earlier on. It's like you kind of want to let notes ring so you can hear them. And, you know, it's like. Oh, that beautiful sound! Oh. Kind of like that where you, 
you pay big long notes that ring and that are dead difficult. If you make a mistake, it sounds pure terrible. But because you're playing a really expensive guitar, it's like, yeah. And you try hitting the, the strings really softly because you can do that too with a really expensive guitar and a good amp. But there's clean and there's clean. It's like you get like the see the forced clean, which is basically what I, I get with that. It's kind of like the jazz chorus sound or the, you know the digital. They're not digital. The solid state, like a really really good solid state. I mean that we um thing we does it as well. The Carlton, well it does it until I broke it. It did it. Um, okay, this is clean but very not clean. Very. Vintage Valby ampy soundy. kind of because this will be I'd imagine um, with the way reissues work these days this is probably as close to the to the original amp whatever it's copied from assuming I'm assuming this existed um, like as a combo I think they kind of always did I don't know if you always got one by 12 combos you certainly used to get most of the masters you could get it as a head or you could get it as a two by 12 combo but I'm not sure about the one by 12 because obviously it's a good bit shorter your full size heads Yawn. They're massive. I mean, even my, my sub text are sort of two thirds, and I think that's probably available in a head. At, it's that same size as the soft tech in a two third size um, for a one by twelve cabinet sort of thing. Mind you, I'd rather the two third size one because then you can put it on top of a two by twelve, and it's just like it, that way. But you can't put a full size head on top of a thinner cabinet. You know, it's got you can't have the head wider than the body than the the cabinet. But I mean, it's 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 lovely. And that's been, I, I, didn't, I had no idea what it cost, I have no idea where it was made, I don't know anything about it. I'm assuming it's pretty much brand new because it looked pretty much brand new. Also, I'm assuming this is my pal who's quite savvy with buying, he buys new stuff, quite expensive new stuff, but he gets it like at the start of the year when it's like, you know, discontinued models and stuff like that. So what he ends up with is he gets like, like guitars that are a, a slightly odd colour like peach or something the one that didn't sell well and he gets like you know like a third off it when he put got in the sale and it's basically i wonder if that's what's happened with this i wonder if this is was a reduced price thing because it's in that color which is an amazing color it's one i would choose totally my dad had a range rover that had a six that when he bought it had a, the previous one put a six thousand pound upgrade to it which gave it the interior was that color like well maybe not it was a little bit a little bit creamier than that but it was like red cream and black and it looked amazing on the inside um it looked like that but that's maybe a little bit too out there for some people you probably find that the one that was black probably sold an awful lot more that might have been a limited run and then you know andertons or whatever just sells them off it wouldn't surprise me that, that could be complete that might not be no, nothing in that at all <laughs> Even if I did, which I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a stereo thing and an audio input rather than using that shitty mic. But even that, even when you listen to it, it's different. It's like being in a room, hearing a real guitar amp is not the same. Even if you've got an amazing stereo, 
it's not the same as it actually being there. You know what I mean? You're getting an approximation, and even if I recorded it really well, put it in there, you're still still got to get compressed by YouTube, and then you've got to listen to it on your phone or your laptop or whatever you've got. And just for reference in here, I'm because of the way mine set up. See if you've got a hi-fi, any sort of hi-fi. Uh, well, within you know, and you put your the output of your TV or your laptop into the hi-fi. You can it actually the sound in here is not that bad. It's only when you're listening to it on like a phone or a tablet where it's like I I not optimized everything, compressed it and shit, and I've never did any of that crap. So it'll probably sound really shit on your phone. Or good headphones would probably do it. That's it. It's a Marshall though, should we play Judas Priest on it? So it's a nice, it's breaking up there and it's like, I'm saying I, you don't really get distortion because it, there's no master volume, it's just two volumes for each channel. Uh, so, but I mean... There's your valve distortion and just having a wee, a wee booster, a wee tubey screamer in front of that kind of thing, which is kind of what a tube screamer's for. Yeah, when you run in like that Joyo pedal, it's like, it's not, it's not, you're not taking a, a neutral sound and then putting overdrive over it, you're taking a sound that's already quite got a character and you're slightly altering that character so the, the actual original sound is still there. The rap pedal does that as well though it's a little bit subtler, you know it's like it takes the sound that's already there and alters it, you can't just plug it into straight into the desk and use it, it's like no no it's got to be, whereas this is, <laughs> still sounds like that even though I'm using the pedal it's still the it's still very much the amp we're hearing. Suffering a little bit from option overload here, this guitar. I was actually getting a wee bit of option overload playing that. See when the guitars sound so fucking good in every position, it's like this one's got sex. It's like sex sounds to cycle through. It's like, ah, I kind of in some ways maybe that's why you know something to be said for you can't really see that that's a one pickup guitar, but you know like a one pickup guitar, it's like you're if it's a pure amazing sound, there's so much you can do with it. You, and you've got a volume control and a tone control. Ah, you know what I mean? So, uh, bridge pickup, single coil. I'm doing the foot on the monitor thing. I keep doing it. I don't know why. What's going on? It's just there's something about the foot. It's not a monitor, but I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, something about bouncing. Something like Thank <laughs> you. 
It's nice and clean behind it as well. Um, like you let it, when you hit the reverb and go bang, let it ring, it just stops. Out it goes. That's just channel two. I think I could get away with that one. Just that one. But I wouldn't, I would definitely uh, use both. I always thought, wonder it was one of those things that, you know, it's like, you, you know, things like, um, you know, you, you always see on, you always see online, uh, you know, like the, over wrapping your tailpiece and doing all, all those things that are like oh for the tone and taking the pickup covers off to get more treble and all that stuff i kind of assumed that the the jumping the two channels together was a kind of oh yeah do that it's you know it's, it's a wee bit better i think it's kind of necessary to be honest uh the difference between having one of the either one of them on one of them being too much this another one being too much that when you mix the two of them together, you can get it absolutely perfect. And I, I mm -hmm. think that's a fantastic sound we're getting there. for running that um, the, the difference the volume control makes in it as well you know, I'll, okay I'll play, I'll play it softly with a bit of a full bung play it down a wee bit That applies when there's no distortion pedal on as well. Um, but that's so you get your clean and bit of distortion. And that's why I like having a don't like or I prefer not having a treble bleed circuit on my volume control so I can do that kind of thing. But I think it's kind of the way I always used to uh, the soft tech was I used the rap pedal so it sounded a bit more like the amp did when it was at full bung, but but at house levels, which is kind of what the two pedals I'm using here are, or the one the you're kind of I don't think it's, I found it see when I took the soft tech into the studio and I took the rap pedal the rap pedal didn't do anything because it was already sounded like that kind of thing it made it was just like a wee oh <laughs> if anything it made it a bit less. Whereas I think that's what we're doing here. Basically, putting that on is probably quite a close approximation to the kind of distortion, the kind of sound you would get with that thing up at half half volume with no pedals. Like if you're playing along with drums and stuff, which is, is brilliant because then you've got your, as I said, you can... You've got, you've got clean. But then a bit of... Hit it a certain way, wibble it the right way, and it's... It's, it's a rock machine.
So, passes the Malco test. Totally. It's amazing. Um, I, I, as I said, I don't even know what it is, but it's awesome. Uh, that's kind of one way of looking at it. You know, obviously, the specs and stuff are online, and it'll be able to say, I don't even know how many watts it is. I, can't, I, I don't even want to try turning it up, because it'll just... It just goes too loud, and I guess it's one of those ones that because it's so powerful, it's not. It's like I have, I have this problem with the big bass amp, which is too next door, but it's not the one with that cabinet, the four hundred watt bass amp. Because it's so powerful, when you turn it up, it doesn't necessarily sound louder. In the sense of you know, if you turn the volume up on your telly, it starts to distort. Therefore, it sounds. Like it's getting much louder, even though it's not actually the. Well, it's because it's be so much headroom in it. It's like you turn it up, and it doesn't. The actual sound doesn't change. Only the the volume of it changes, which is when you get to the point of going like dung dung dung. You know, if you if you're used to playing through a normal bass amp, and it's like especially playing the Sabbathy sort of stuff, you know, you get you thump it, you can kind of get it to distort and stuff like that. You turn it, in, which makes it sound louder, even though it's not actually. It's just more. But with these things, it's like you turn it up, and then you say, up here turning it up." It's like up here, going up here, dung, 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 and turn it up, dung, dung, dung. He's like up here, up a half, dung, 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 dung. And then at this point, and then you turn round, and it's like the drummer's sitting there like that, bashing a cymbal, going, fucking turn, Jesus, I can't hear myself. And you're like, oh, right, oh, sorry. And then over the next four seconds, your ears come back down, and then you can hear people talking again. It's just, it's too loud. That's what happens when you try and run a, an amp like that in here at a supreme volume. It'll sound amazing. It'll sound amazing. And then you won't hear the police banging at the door, going, because you've not noticed the perceived the difference between perceived volume and actual volume what a load of nonsense added on so this is probably Saturday night I'll probably do my live stream tomorrow night Um, I might even still be using that app I quite like it I, I, mean, I don't quite like it I, think, I love it I think it's amazing Um, I'm going to guess how much it costs grand I don't, I, to be honest, the problem is I don't look up things that I can't afford. So generally, I don't. I, I, do, I do get it. You know, it's like you know, people who use what, Top Gear and stuff, and it's like, oh, reading all up about the new Ferrari and stuff like that. I said, fine, even though you're never going to buy a Ferrari. But it's like I don't really look up guitars that cost thousands of pounds. I'm more interested in older ones <laughs> and cheaper ones. Uh, just because they're, they're a bit more. Oh, I might buy one of them. Um, so I don't really know anything about how much amps that are. I don't even know how much these things. That, I think that's what's. Was it, I don't know, that's like 700 odd quid. I don't know, you see them in reverb second hand for 700 odd quid and stuff like that. Like, whoa! Um, that's slightly different. I'd say that's a more. It's a much rougher amp. It's a much, much more industrial everything. That's a, a, a more. And, and a, a more Rolls Royce uh, Range Rover interior. That's a Range Rover. That's a Defender. There you go. Done. Um. Very nice, very nice, love it. So, rocking size in a half hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some ten minute videos. Honestly, at some point I will do ten minute videos when I don't feel the need to talk. Also, I've got this. I'm, see, I just keep adding stuff. There's a box, a, a strobe tuner, which I'm gonna do a per. Let's get a wee. I assume. Oh, it says there, 04. B2, E1. Alright, oh, okay. Alright, so that should be an E. I, 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 oh, it's got a pick on it as well, so I assume you're meant to. And it stops. Uh, I'll have to do a video on that. I know the principles. I think, you know, if it flashes at a, a certain frequency. It probably when and the strings vibrate and if the strings vibrate at exactly the same frequency it'll probably no longer look like it's flashing or something like that but um, it looks like a cool thing anyway it's also a very small tuner I mean if that works that's a it f fits in your the tuner pocket in your jeans you know so it's like maybe always have a tuner I mean, I'm going to have to have a wee look at that could be a very handy thing also it's pretty cheesy <laughs> it's like, oh what's that what are you doing there lad red lights on rock on like it's a pretty 